Example 8 is, is one of those examples where we start playing with the quasi-static universe. Maybe I should have combined the previous section with example 8. But anyway, so we have a spherical shell of radius r of uh, uniform uh, surface charge density sigma. Um, and it's rotating around an axis with a, an angular momentum that changes over time, angular velocity that changes over time, omega t. Uh, find the electric field inside and outside of the sphere. So um, here's a good example of why you might want to break down the electric field into the electric field due to the Coulomb law and the electric field due to Faraday's law. Okay, so the electric field due to Coulomb's law is, you know, we, we calculated that as if it's a point charge of the total charge divided by r cubed, r squared, in the r hat direction. Um, so that's as if there was a, a point charge of total charge q at the origin. Well, how much is the total charge? Uh, we get r squared sigma in the r hat direction all over epsilon naught r squared. Okay, so the distance r squared inside the electric field is zero. Okay. Okay. The Faraday um, now this this is a static electrostatics result, okay? But we're not dealing with electrostatics, we're dealing with a changing electric field, um, we're changing magnetic field due to the changing velocity. Um, but we're dealing in the quasi-static realm where as long as it doesn't change very quickly, everything should be okay, it should be close. Okay, so let's calculate the electric field due to the Faraday's law. Um, so that is going to be equal to the, um, let me pull up some sheets here. I feel bad now. Um, oh, the change in magnetic field. Curl of V vector is equal to minus the change in the magnetic field over dt. Um, oh, we had um, this. We had this result as well. Of the A vector. We've already calculated the A vector um, uh, for a sphere of rotating charge, angular velocity uh, omega. So we can calculate the Faraday's electric field just by looking at our answer from before. And so inside we get uh, minus mu naught r sigma over 3 uh, omega. Uh, so the change in omega is the only thing that really changes. And that is going to be with the component r sine theta in the phi hat direction. And outside, so that's inside, we get omega uh, mu naught r to the fourth sigma divided by 3 d omega by dt. And then we get sine theta over r squared in the phi hat direction. Okay, that's outside. Okay, so we calculated, and the electric field is just going to be the sum of those two. So, And the, the reason why this was easy is we, we drew in our result earlier where we said as long as the divergence of E is zero, okay, in this case we're treating them as two separate entities, right? We're only worried about the electric field due to the changing magnetic field. Over here, um, we've already basically canceled out whatever electric field was due to the clone force. Um, so we just assumed that the electric field for the, the Faraday's law was zero. Um, and then we, we use this one using the A that we got earlier from our rotating spheres of, uh, spheres of charge. So that was rather easy. Um, but it would be impossible to solve um, if you didn't take advantage of the quasi-static nature of this problem. Now, when the velocity changes very rapidly, um, these answers won't quite apply. They won't be quite right, but that's something we have to worry about later. Example 9, and then we're done. Thanks, bye.